This lesson is all about feed types. So there are many two different feed types. The first one is concentrates and the other one is roughages. So on this slide, we're first going to look at the different types of concentrates. And there are two main ones you guys must know. The first one is you get protein rich concentrates, as the name implies. There's a lot of protein in there. And then you have energy rich ones. So those with more sugar, carbohydrates, that type of thing to give energy to the animals. So the main functions of concentrates generally at the bottom of the screen there, it's mainly there to increase milk and meat production. So generally just production, but uh, among others for milk and cows and meat, generally also for cattle and for sheep and so on. Then also we give these type of concentrates to fatten the animals when they're ready for slaughtering. And they generally talk about fattening or finishing. So the finishing refers to your finishing this animal just before slaughter. So it has grown its full length, you're happy with its size, and now the idea is just to get it fat enough to get a bit more weight on it. So again, a better weight for the animals, usually in cattle, is you get a better um, price for it. So that's the reason why we want them fatter. And then lastly, is there for growth and reproduction. So usually protein generally is very, very good for growth of young animals. And yes, it is needed for the reproduction of certain animals so that they can reproduce. And energy technically also usually helps with this. Then the second type we get is the roughages. So this is usually the feed you get out in the felt. Uh, there's also two types, protein-rich and carb or energy-rich. Again, as the name applies, the protein-rich has more protein and the energy-rich has more carbohydrates in. And the main function of your roughages, well, the main reason why we give it to the animals is because it's the cheapest source of nutrients. The farmer generally doesn't have to uh, plant any extra crops. Um, usually, he just uses the felt grasses and so on. If he has it, if he does not have it, then obviously he has to... Uh, cultivate the soil and, and plant these specific uh, plant types. But generally, even if he does have to plant it, it's the cheaper source of nutrients. Usually your concentrate is much more expensive. Then secondly, it helps the rumen develop in young animals, especially with the cows. If you guys can remember, we did the cow stomach compartments. Usually the calf is born with an underdeveloped, well, three underdeveloped stomach compartments, whereas the abomasum is the main functioning stomach. So in this case, I have to eat roughages to develop the rest of the stomach compartments. And then lastly, it also increases the feed intake. So the, you usually talk about it makes up the bulk of the feed, and this means that the concentrates give the, gives the needed energy and protein and so on, but then when they eat roughages, it actually makes them feel fuller. So it feels to the animals that they are full, they're not hungry anymore, and hopefully they have gotten in all the nutrients they need, but it's there to allow them to keep on eating. Sometimes animals like to overeat themselves, but they can keep on eating and they won't necessarily become too fat. So the rough fish is just there to fill their stomachs. Then you guys have to know a couple of examples of different concentrates and roughages. So let's look at two examples for the energy rich concentrates. The first one is maize. Again, you guys don't have to know all the detail, like the percentages he given here. This is just kind of like an, uh, a comparison between the different ones, just to give you an idea what I mean with if I say low protein, so between 8 and 10 percent, but you don't have to remember the values. So for maize specifically, it has a high fat content. So again, it, it actually helps to fatten the animals. There is not a lot of protein, so it has a low crude protein content. And yellow maize itself is rich in carotene. So if they may ask you guys, uh, what is one health benefit of maize or one health benefit of one example of energy rich concentrates, there'll be specific maize has carotene in. So that also helps with the formation of the skin or healthy skin. Then secondly, for the energy rich concentrates, oats. The main thing is animals love this because it's very, very tasty. So it's very good to also um, mix this with any ration for the animal to ensure that they eat all their feed. So it makes everything tasty. Then it does have some protein, but 9.4% is very, very low. Then it has a high carbon fat content and 71.5% digestible nutrients. So this digestible nutrients refers to all nutrients, whether it's carbs, fats, proteins, you name it. So it does have a lot of benefit oats for the animal. So generally they get most of the nutrients they need. Then secondly, um, some protein rich examples. The first one would be ground nut oil cake meal and secondly fish meal. So again, these are rich in proteins. So ground nut 
um, oil cake meal. It's, it kind of have, has laxative properties, so it can cause diarrhea. You can imagine if this animal eats too much protein and maybe only eats protein, the body will try to get rid of the extra protein, so it can cause um, diarrhea. So most of these you give in small amounts to the animal because it's 38% digestible protein. That is kind of high. It seems low because it's less than 50, but for protein content, that is high. Then also it has a lot of digestible nutrients. So generally this is very healthy for the animal. Then the fish meal, it has added vitamins, A, D, B, 12, which is very good for them. It even has a higher digestible protein index here, 55%, meaning it has a high biological value. And again, uh, the fish meal has more proteins in than the ground and oil cake because the fish meal is an animal product. So animal products generally have more proteins in than your plant-based ones. Then also 72% is digestible nutrients of the fish meal. So both these two examples is actually very, very beneficial for animals. Then roughages and two examples. The first one uh, of underneath the energy rich um, type of roughage is oat hay. So this guy is very poor in protein. It almost has no protein in it. So this is just to fill in the bulk of the feed. So again, it's to make the animal feel like it has eaten something, its stomach is full, and it's not hungry. So it does have some digestible nutrients, so it is healthy, but for, again, protein, no, nah, there's no protein in there. So then it's basically used for supplementation, meaning, again, like I said, if you just want to bulk up the animal, make sure it, it feels um, satiated, it has been eating enough, it's not hungry anymore. Secondly, protein-rich example, there is lucerne hay. This is actually very, very high in, in protein, hence the name protein-rich. It has vitamins A and D, which is good for the animals, and also 55% digestible nutrients. So again, the reason why there's less digestible nutrients is because it has a higher protein content. And generally, this is very, very tasty for animals. So again, if they had to choose between these two examples, the oat hay or the lucerne hay, they would go for lucerne every time. Then we go on to succulent roughages. So succulent just means wet. So usually in the previous example, the two hay bales, lucerne hay and the oat hay, it's dry when it's given to the animals. But succulent roughages is those that still have a good moisture content. So the first one is silage. So usually silage means, um, they say that in siling is a fermentation process. And yes, it is. So meaning usually you get these white bales on farms or whatever the type of hay is, they wrap it in plastic and then allow that wrapped hay bale or whatever it is, allowed to stand for a couple of months in the sun. The sun kind of bakes it. There's bacteria on the inside of uh, this bale, inside of the plastic. And the sun and the plastic allows everything to cook, I want to say cook inside. So then the bacteria starts to ferment everything on the inside. So in this picture, we see the cattle eating the silage. You can still see it looks like hay but it's actually wetter than normal hay and is halfly digested because of the ferment pro fermentation process of the um, bacteria. So then crops include, can include maize, lucerne, oats. So sometimes they use maize, lucerne, oats, uh, hay to make the silage. Then it's also the cheapest way of preserving nutrients. So many times they do silage or give silage to animals in winter time. So during the summer, it's cut, baled, and then wrapped, so to allow it to ferment, and then in winter time, this is given to the animals. So it's a good way of preserving all that, if it's got protein in it, or preserving the carbs, or whatever it has, so that during winter time, all those nutrients are still inside the hay. Then lastly, it's also rich in vitamin A. Then for the green feed, this is literally like the picture shows, allowing the animal to eat off of the land. So it's very tasty, it has a good water content, sugar content. Unfortunately, it has a high laxative effect. So if the animals are allowed to graze on the green feed um, excessively or for the entire day, over a week and so on, they can start to um, experience diarrhea. So this should be managed a couple of hours a day max and then allow the animals to eat dry feed. And also it's very rich in vitamins and minerals, which is good. And yes, like I said, it has a high moisture content. Then this is kind of like a cheat sheet I want you guys to memorize. So for feed suitability, we then generally ask you guys off of a table or whatever, they give different feed items, like we just did the ote, lucerne, hay, um, fish meal. Then they ask, but which one is best for growth? Which one is best for production? Which one is best for energy? It's good to know or to remember, like we just said, which ones are energy rich, which ones are protein rich. So 
off of the slide now, food needed for growth generally must have a high protein content. It can have some carbs, but the main idea is it must be high in protein. And usually if it has phosphorus and calcium, vitamins A, B, D, and E, it's very good for growth in animals, especially for young animals. And secondly, food needed for production. Again, when you hear production, think again, protein, it must have a high BV um, content. So usually the proteins with high BV is good for milk production. Then carbs generally is good for pregnancy, which also falls under production because the animal is producing a new baby. Then phosphorus and calcium is good both for pregnancy and for milk production. And lastly, vitamins A and D is also good for milk production. Then thirdly, food needed for energy or for fattening the animals. Uh, proteins is good, but generally just for young animals. So again, if, if young animals are given excessive amounts of proteins, they will grow well, fine. But again, all the extra stuff, all the excess, the body has to use somehow, then it goes and fattens them. Then lots of carbohydrates, it's very, very good for older animals, again, for fattening them. And vitamin A and D is also good to help the animals get more energy or to fat, to help them fat, become fat. Then, the last thing is we need to talk about rational, ration supplementing. So this is if the animal is not getting enough specific vitamins, minerals, protein, and so on in their diet, then a farmer has to supplement. So they have to add things. So some ways, like they show in the picture here, is salt licks. Um, salt blocks is also a good way of quickly give the, giving the animal um, extra nutrients and so on. Then uh, dosing, dosing goes into the mouth, like the sheep there is getting a dose of vitamins or something. Then this shows an injection needle at the bottom here and something that says rail grow. So the injection needle is just to show that you can use injections to inject specific vitamins or medicine or whatever into the animal um, subcutaneously, that means under the skin. Or Ralgro in this case shows us actually hormones. So some hormones can actually be injected also into animals, usually behind the ear, to allow them to, well, grow. And the reason why, again, we want animals to grow bigger and so on is to increase their growth. And also eventually when they're bigger, they will weigh more and they will cost more. So some things, these are different ways of supplementing. And the main things to supplement is numbers one to five, minerals, vitamins. NPN is non-protein nitrogen. So it's not proteins, but it's anything that contains nitrogen so that the animal can produce proteins for themselves. Then fourthly, growth hormones, like I just said. And then lastly, synthetic amino acids. So if the animal isn't getting enough protein or specific amino acids, the amino acids can also be injected or added into the animal. Then just quickly, um, how usually are some of these things given? I've roughly stated it, but for mineral supplements, the method usually is with a lick, uh, mixed into the feed or a concentrate feed, drinking water, dosing or injection. So again, dosing goes into the mouth, with, um, injected into the mouth and injection is usually underneath the skin. Vitamins themselves can be added to feed, drinking water or also injected into the animal. And thirdly, the non-protein nitrogen or NPNs, they are important because the microorganisms of ruminants specifically, they synthesize, I can't even say it, synthesize, which, mean, which means building proteins from NPNs. So meaning if the animal gets these nitrogen containing amino acids in their body, then the ruminants um, or the microorganisms in them, in their stomachs, can make proteins from this nitrogen. So that's why we have talked about it. Um, cows don't have to ingest meat or anything. They don't have to eat something with um, proteins in it. But any, most of the feed that they eat, some of it does have nitrogen in the feed, in the grass and so on. So then the microorganisms can turn all those nitrogen containing molecules into protein. So then some methods or two things actually how that usually have NPNs in it is urea and biorate. So urea usually is added to a feed or a lick. Usually if you see a salt lick, it says there somewhere contains urea or maybe it doesn't. But unfortunately, urea can be poisonous when it becomes wet. So many times with cattle and so on, one has to place the salt lick somewhere where um, the rain can't get to it. And the, otherwise, it starts to pool the water around the lick and then all the urea is in the water. And then for some reason, the animals come and they drink that urea water and that can be very poisonous for them. Then secondly, by red, uh, that is the picture here to the side, looks like white 
uh, dots or maybe like small white pearls. That is actually by red. So that's also added to the feed as a type of NPN. It's got nitrogen in there, but it's not really protein. So it's also added to the feed and uh, it's actually more expensive than your urea. That's why most farmers urea tend to go for urea, but it is safer because if it does rain or if it becomes wet, it's not that dangerous for the animals. So they will be able to eat wet by rate rather than the urea. Then lastly, the growth stimulants. Um, usually you get thyroid regulators that's injected into the animal and this is specifically is there to increase metabolic rate for the animal. So meaning a quicker metabolic rate means the quicker they digest food and the quicker they will grow. So that's usually why they give that regulator. Then secondly, hormones. So the hormones, again, also, also for growth stimulants and so on, it, it's usually implanted behind the ear of the animal uh, for a slow release, just to make sure that it doesn't actually harm the animal. So usually it's the best place to do that behind the ear. Then antibiotics itself, usually again, like the name says, is to destroy bacteria and so on, but they do give this for chickens also to increase sorry, their growth. Then fourthly, anabolic compounds. So ana, an anab um, anabolic just refers to the fact that something's being built. So in this case, anabolic compounds will help the animal build muscle. So technically all these growth stimulants, like I says, is there to help the animal grow quicker or build more muscle. Then lastly, tranquilizers. And tranquilizers are actually there to calm animals down, especially when you move them, um, just to make them more manageable. But many times animals standing in a feed lot is actually given tranquilizers because calm animals gain quicker weight because they will stand and eat more. Okay, so that's the main idea behind this and that's the end of this lesson.